Hello and welcome back to the channel. If you guys are new, a couple weeks ago I picked up two abandoned airplanes and I'm going to be using the parts from both of them and making uh, one really good airplane. I'm also going to be modifying it quite a bit. So in today's video, uh, I'm going to be going over the landing gear that I quite heavily modified. And then also, uh, I got a 26 year old snowmobile using the engine from that and putting it into the airplane. So it sounds kind of crazy and it is, but I think it's going to be pretty epic and uh, it should make that airplane quite literally fly. We'll start working on the landing gear. So I just got my chromoly to do that. So we're going to be extending this landing gear down another, I think it's seven or eight inches. This is how high the plane's going to be sitting. So that's going to be quite the lift on this front end. All right, one gear leg is just about finished. I've got it all tacked up just with the MIG welder. I'm gonna go over it with TIG soon, but before I do that, I wanna figure out how I'm gonna get this suspension to work. So I'm gonna to have to extend this. I'm gonna measure what this gap is here that we gotta fill. Next, I'll have to make some little plates to go in here and reinforce this joint and provide a bolt hole to mount up to this. This original plane, uh, its landing gear was completely seized. This is one of them here, and I was just about ready to snap this thing with how much force I was trying to get to uh, to move this completely rusted in there and won't move at all. So I just figured it'd be easier to kind of start fresh and the crashed airplane had three good parts of the four that I needed. So I'm just making up this fourth part, which is going to be uh, identical to the other one. So it's actually pretty easy to make. Uh, this only took me like 30 minutes or so to kind of come up with. I'm gonna get this all welded up and test fit it. And then I'm gonna start working on extending these things. And then we can start mounting these up to the plane and see how it's gonna look. So here's what I got. I still got to fill it with the TIG, but I think that's pretty good for just the MIG welder for now. And uh, here it is versus kind of the original or the, the plan. So yeah, it turned out uh, pretty good. I'm, that'll get bungees around it. And then it extends like this as the wheels go up and down for the suspension. But yeah, I'm happy with how that turned out. looks good. That is what's going to be added. This is what it was originally. So there's two and a half inches of extension there to bring these uh, gear extensions to life. So that's what I got. I'm gonna tack these up with the MIG welder. All right, there they are tacked up. They're looking pretty good and perfectly straight, both of them. That's, uh, that's looking pretty good. So. We'll get this kind of fitted onto the airplane and then we'll see how that looks. All right, so that is basically the angle I'm looking for in flight because when it's on the ground, it's gonna sit a couple inches lower, maybe an inch or so. Uh, so that's where I'm gonna be welding the landing gear up to to get a baseline for where it's gonna sit. If I kind of hold that in place until this thing bottoms out, uh, which this strap is here for. So let's get an idea for how much the suspension is gonna move. That's a, that's a pretty good deflection travel, so I'm happy with that. All right, I've got this piece tacked on both sides, looking pretty good, and everything's lining up just how I wanted it to. Now I gotta get onto the other side. All right, guys, I got all the parts welded up. These landing gear took quite a while to uh, finish up with the TIG welder, but I think they came out pretty good. They're Definitely overkill, super strong, stronger than they were and stronger than they even need to be. So I'm happy with how they came out. Wheels and tires ready to go on. So now I'm gonna get these uh, suspension parts on just quickly. I'm just gonna use uh, just some cheap little bolts to hold it on for now, just so I can get this thing off the jack stands and be able to push it around the shop a little bit.
All right. Well, that's about as far as we can go with the landing gear for now. But I think it turned out really good. I'm super happy with it. But now it's time to figure out how we're going to get a motor in this thing. All right, guys. I just wanted to show you what I just picked up. The 1997 ski -Doo Formula Z. That's going to be the donor sled. And I just wanted to show you guys kind of how it looked before... I start tearing this thing apart because all I need is the motor. All right, before we do anything with this, it really needs a bath. This thing's been sitting for quite some time and it, it really shows. So we'll get this thing cleaned up and then we'll take it in and start tearing it apart. All right, guys, we got the snowmobile engine out on the right and on the left, we got the 503 from the plane. So the 503 was a 50 horsepower engine and we're going to be replacing it with this 107 horsepower snowmobile engine. Should be a little bit more fun to fly with that motor in there. The front of this 583, you can see that there is actually casting marks for mounting up the gearbox. So that's really handy. I can machine that down myself. I want to add this electric start over here to replace this recoil and also the engine mount which i'm hoping should line up in the bottom of this motor but we'll have to see so that's the snowmobile mount and that's the aircraft mount so we'll swap those over i'll take this exhaust off and take the previous electric starter bracket off and anything else i can and uh, just see how they kind of bolt up and see how well i can convert this thing to an aircraft engine Okay, so this is the 503 with this uh, surface all machined down. And I wanted to show you guys how I actually did this on the 583. Uh, it's installed in the plane right now, but I'm gonna show you quickly what I did. So I've got a standard cheap router and I drilled a hole in there so that I could put a bolt through onto that output shaft and then trace around with, this is just a standard cheap Home Depot wood bit and I went lower and lower with each cut and on the 583 that's in the plane it actually came out looking just about the exact same as this. So what I have left to do here is I have to drill and tap some new holes into this because they're roughed in from the cast marks but they're not fully drilled and tapped so that'll be to secure these bolts which hold this gearbox on. From there I'm going to take it all apart and I'm going to soak it in this stuff here which should remove any kind of oxidization or crusty bits and clean this metal up and make it look like brand new again. And then I've also got a rebuild kit coming for this motor. So I'll let that soak for a couple days probably. And then by the time the rebuild kit comes in, I should have some nice new looking parts to put it all back together with. And then uh, this motor will be as good as new. Right now I'm gonna drill and tap these holes and then take all of this apart. So the bolts fit now, which is great. So I'm gonna just, uh, Put this gearbox on and make sure that I went deep enough with these holes because if I go any deeper I'm going to go into the water jacket so I want to be very careful with that. All right guys I am stoked this gearbox fit right up. All these bolts are in very snug and didn't have an issue with any of those threads. Uh, from routering that down we got a pretty even gap all the way around here. Not much of a gap just uh, they're made it up perfectly so that's good and now it's time to take this thing all apart. Soak it in a bath to get this aluminum all cleaned up and yeah let's get back to work all right guys check this out i just pulled this out of its bath it's been sitting in for maybe 10 minutes and uh wow it looks so much better than it did before so this is the product here i use it's just simple green heavy duty cleaner mixed with some warm water and like i said probably 10 minutes in this bucket it was sitting fully submerged pulled it out and it pretty much looked like this already so that's crazy that it uh it cleaned up the metal that nicely and it was similar to this, this metal here that's all textured and pitted. Maybe something more like this. Not quite as bad, but yeah, what a difference. All right, guys, parts are in to rebuild this motor. So everything's been sitting in cleaning solution. I got new pistons for it. 
Uh, I got whole new seal kit, top and bottom end, bearings, and anything else I need to rebuild this thing. So let's uh, get this thing rebuilt and then hopefully today we can get it thrown in the plane. The motor is freshly rebuilt and I just kind of set it in place to see how it would look and it looks like it uh, it sits the same way the other motor did. Uh, there'll just be some more features on it like all the liquid cooling stuff but uh, basically the same motor just a lot more power. All right guys well that's all I got for you today. If you made it to this point of the video thank you I really appreciate it and I can't wait to see you on the next one because we got a lot of exciting stuff coming up. Uh, I got this thing back from being powder coated. So I'm going to show you what went into that and all the work that led up to that. Also, spoiler alert, we did get this engine running briefly, but there's a lot more work to go into it. And I hope we can keep up this quick pace and get this project wrapped up and in the air soon. So thank you again. And I hope to see you on the next one.